Today we are putting to the test the new Tom Ford eye color quad in Forbidden Pink. I had been waiting and waiting for this to come out since I saw the sneak peeks of it last year and I finally, it came out pretty much everywhere at the same time, like globally from what I can see and I got my little hands on it so we're going to put this to the test today. I am very excited. And uh, also the new Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Concealer. Now I've been testing this one for about a week now and I definitely know how I feel about it and I want to share my thoughts with you guys on this little concealer stick. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, let's go ahead and do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell and let's get into it. We're going to focus on the new Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Concealer first. So the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Concealer melds a hydrating skincare ingredient with imperfection blurring makeup technology. This formula features hyaluronic acid for instant 12 hour hydration and spherical powders to ensure silky smooth seamless application for comfortable non-drying wear. So imperfection blurring makeup technology corrects and conceals to diminish the look of imperfect imperfections, dark spots, under eye circles and hyperpigmentation. Soft focus powders offer a natural soft matte, soft matte finish. Weightless spherical powders provide comfortable non-drying wear, transfer, sweat and humidity resistant and waterproof, non-caking, pouring and crease resistant. From what I can see, there are about 10 shades of this particular concealer range, so it definitely needs to be increased, but I could be wrong about that. I was just looking at what was available on the Tom Ford website just then. And I have the shade 0C0 Bear, which was the same shade that I picked up the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Concealer in and I did do a comparison of the swatches of these two particular concealers for you guys um, so that you can see the difference and I'll insert that here now for you. I do find that this one in Zero C Bear is actually a really lovely match for me, if that helps, if you use me as a shade reference. This concealer was not as expensive as this concealer. I'm pretty sure I paid 95 US dollars for this, which is like 150 Australian dollars. Insane. I understand that. Insane. I was in Vegas on my honeymoon and really went YOLO in the Tom Ford store in Caesars Palace, let me tell you. 77 Australian dollars I paid for this on Selfridges. So, you know, that's actually not too bad. It's way more expensive than like the Huda Beauty concealer, for example. I think it was about 50 Australian dollars off the top of my head. But you know, it's not that much more drastic given that it's Tom Ford from like the Huda Beauty versus like this one, which was like double that price, right? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a speed through of just me putting on my foundation for today and then we will get into the concealer application. So now we are gonna put this little bad boy to the test. Normally I put color corrector on both of my under eyes because that's just what I do. Uh, I, I do have <laughs> dark circles. But to show you guys just a comparison of with color corrector and without it, I'll just put the Charlotte Tilbury color corrector on this eye only. So I'm just gonna tap this on. Normally I would actually put this on underneath my foundation too, I just forgot. Now, I don't personally find this color corrector to change the formulation of concealers. So that's why I like to use this one, especially for reviews, because I've never found the Charlotte Tilbury color corrector to change the formulation of my concealers in any way, shape or form. It just really does help with my color correction. Now, a little context before we go into like applying the concealer and my thoughts and all that kind of stuff. My under eyes are rather difficult to conceal. I do have a lot of darkness. I have pigmentation here. So you'll always see like, I look like I have a ring here just from like pigmentation and darkness. That's really hard to cover. They're dry, like super dry. Uh, I have a little bit of texture here. I have fine lines and wrinkles, you know, all of the jazz. So for me to like a concealer, it's got to cover my dark circles. It's, I like my concealers to be full coverage. I like them to be smoothing on my texture. I like them to be long wearing um, and not settle in fine lines and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, 
if you've been around here before you know I have a very 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 high standard for concealers and they have to meet that standard now again this is all my opinion my makeup preference and how I like my under eyes to look so take that with a grain of salt but if you find that we vibe in our makeup styles then maybe it's helpful for you I'm going to apply the concealer on this eye first like so and I'll do this eye and then we'll compare it although I Put the color corrector on this side but anyway we'll still compare it so i just have been putting this amount on now you can tap it out with your finger if you like i don't like to do that um you can also tap i i should caveat not because of the uh product looks bad when tapping out with a finger i just don't like to use my hand like fingers or hands on my face if i can help it can use a sponge when i've used a sponge tapping this product out like with most concealers it does eat up a little bit of that coverage it definitely makes it a little bit less coverage so i actually haven't been using the sponge to blend this out my preferred way is to use a brush but i am actually going to try this sponge today because i just picked this up and tried it today and this is the laura mercier sponge and it's kind of like it's not like a real techniques or beauty blender it's like a proper kind of makeup sponge like those wedges and i noticed that this adds like a lot of coverage it doesn't seem to eat up the product at all so I'm actually going to try this because I think it's going to blend it out quite nicely and add coverage which it is and I'm into that I'll link this sponge down below for you guys if you're interested I actually quite like it it's a weird shape and it takes a little bit to get used to but I actually really like it so this is layer one and just keep in mind, I don't have a color corrector on, which I normally would, um, but I think it's done a pretty decent job. Now you can still see I have darkness in here and normally that's like, that's just because I haven't put a color corrector on as well, but I will say I do need to do a couple of layers with this concealer as I do with every single concealer I own. I can assure you, I usually put on, you guys don't normally see it on camera cause I'm like how boring for you, you get the gist, but I normally put on about three layers. The first layer has got the most level of product. The second layer, it like tapers down each layer. The only concealer I have come across that I don't have to do that with is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. Usually I can just do one layer of that concealer and it's pretty darn good. So just for context purposes, layering, having to layer concealer products to me is not an issue at all because I've always, always, always had to do that. This is it, just one layer and then just with the color corrector on this side. I'm going to continue to build this concealer up and I just do the exact same kind of layer I will just use this sponge again because why not so that's two layers and you can already see that darkness there it's pretty much nearly disappeared right like nearly layer three that is the concealer on this side no color corrector and just tapped out with that sponge I think it's looking pretty darn good personally and now I'm gonna do this side and I'm going to tap this side out with my BK Angie Hot and Flashy A506 brush because this is what I have been using to tap this out. So this with the color corrector is kind of what I've been doing all week. You can already tell this is one layer on this side, but I do have the color corrector on. So you can already tell like that darkness is just so much more covered and like I really don't even need to do uh, another layer really. Like I will just put a little bit more on for my sake, um, but I, I don't necessarily need to. But again, you can tell it's it's just so traceless. Like it really is traceless on the skin. It's smoothing, it's hydrating while still being like matte. It's weird <laughs> um, and it's just, I don't know, it feels like I'm not wearing any concealer at all on my under eyes and I just have to tell you guys, I am like freakishly blown away by this concealer. Now I didn't super love the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate concealer. It's not a horrible concealer, it's just okay to me, but this one has truly blown me away. Like truly, I have been enjoying this concealer so much. It wears so lovely throughout the day. It doesn't break up. It doesn't feel heavy or cakey. It doesn't settle in fine lines. It just doesn't kind of move, which is really, really lovely, but it doesn't make my under eyes look dry in any way, shape or form. I love the coverage level on this. Like, yeah, okay, I have to put a couple of layers on, but I don't mind that. Um, but I, I love that I can get it to the full coverage that I personally like, or if I wanted a little bit less coverage, 
because it's more of a natural look, I can do that as well. I love how easy it is to blend out. I love every single thing about this concealer. I really, 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 really do. I honestly have nothing bad to say about this concealer. I really, really, really don't. It's, it's brilliant in my mind. Maybe the shade range. The shade range needs work. That's, that's my massive like negative of this concealer. I'm gonna quickly powder my under eyes just so that you guys can see what it looks like when it's set. I use the Westman Atelier Pink Bubble Powder. I know she says that this isn't meant for under eyes, but for some reason it works really well on my under eyes. So, you know, for me it works. And uh, this is the KVD Powder Brush. It's number 25 and I am obsessed. It's such a good under eye powder brush. So it's my new fave and it needs to be cleaned already. So I'm just picking up some of the Westman Atelier powder and I'll just tap it. This is what the under eyes are looking like set and I don't know about you guys, but I think they look pretty darn good. Like, are they the most flawless and like perfect under eyes in the world? No, but I'm just never gonna have that unless I get like surgery or filler or something. And I don't wanna do that. So I, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with this. I really like it. I've really liked my makeup every single day since I've been trying this concealer. So yeah, I don't know you guys. I mean, I'm not gonna tell you whether or not to buy this, only you can decide that for yourself, but I am obsessed. Just saying, just saying. All right, uh, I'm gonna go and uh, finish the rest of my base makeup. The products that I use will be down below and uh, we're gonna dip into this little bad boy. So let's do it. My base makeup is finished. Now you didn't see my blush application because I'm also filming a quick little review on the new Janessa Myricks cream blurring balm blush thingies. So it's like inception video inside a video, you know? Um, so that's what's on my cheeks in terms of the blush, but you saw everything else. And after laying, we are now going to get into this forbidden pink quad. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. I love this. I have a Tom Ford ranking that I'm gonna try my hardest to remember to link down below for you guys, where I talk about the different formulas and the ones that I prefer. When I tell you the intense love affair I have with the cream formula from Tom Ford, it can't be explained into words. I love, love this formula so, so much. This packaging combined with a color story that is very me and my cream formula, it was like the holy grail of Tom Ford quads for me. So the level of excitement I have from this is just next level, sharp lie. Um, and I'm really hoping it performs like the other cream formula quads that I have. Because I do have every single cream formula quad, all of them. And they're amazing, every single one of them. Um, now, I think this was 145 Australian dollars. You can get this off Myra and David Jones currently. You can also get the lipsticks. And they do have this particular packaging in Rose Topaz as well. I'm gonna insert swatches for you guys right now because I swatched this out. I also swatched it out and compared it with Rose Topaz just in case you are trying to choose between the two um, and you wanna see the difference or if you have this and you just wanna see how different this is, I have swatched and compared it in that. And I also swatched each one of these shades and like blended it out on my hands just as a speed through so you guys can see that. Let's go into the speed through of the swatches and then we'll create a look. I do always prime my lids still, even when I use these. So I'm just taking my Rare Beauty Eye Primer. 
In terms of brushes and the way to use this cream formula if you haven't come across this before, it's actually very, very easy to use and you can use it in multiple ways. You can just use your fingers, like you can literally just like pick this shadow up and just blend it out on your lid. Quite often I will do that with the Rose Topaz shade. I'll just blend, like pop it on with my finger and off I go. Um, you can use like your normal brushes, a blending brush, all that kind of thing. This formula is like the best formula in my opinion for like easy, effortless, chic looks workday looks, that kind of a thing. Quite often I will just reach for my Tom Ford quartz for work. My favorite brush personally to use with the cream formula is the Rafa number 33. It has become my favorite brush of all time. It really has. Now this looks dirty. It has, it's the excess color and everything is wiped off. I have like one of these little things. Um, so it's not, it's just, so it looks like it's got shadow on it, but it doesn't. So I'm gonna dip into this color first. And when I swatched this, I was like, oh, this is gonna be my new favorite one and done. I could tell. And the other great thing about the cream to powder formula is that it doesn't really have any fallout because <laughs> it's, you know, well, sorry, the cream formula, I should say, because it's like cream, so it's brilliant. Okay, so you can see how easy that was, right? So I like to personally pack it on. If you just wanna blend it through the crease first, you absolutely can. And then I just turn my brush. So when I pack it on, it's like, packing it on like that way and then when I want to blend it out I like turn it sideways like that and then kind of stick this little pointy bit into like my crease here and then just do this really softly now I'm not using a lot of pressure and I kind of squiggle as well so it's not about pressure or anything you still use the really soft touch it's just about the way that you angle your brush but I just find this like so quick and easy especially for those of you that are in a rush like if you're in a rush to do your like eye looks because work, mom, whatever, like you're, you know, you don't have a lot of time. This brush is brilliant and this formula is brilliant. And then honestly, if you want to build it up more, you can just like pack the color on. It's up, it's really up to you. Oh, I like that. Stunning. Gonna take a Sephora precision shadow brush, go back into that exact same shade and pop that on the lower lash line here. One thing to keep in mind with Tom Ford quads is depending on the formula, not all the formulas, but more so with this cream formula, a lot of the time the shades are not gonna be as impactful as say like a like a Pat McGrath Labs shade or something like that. Like it is a little bit of a softer wash of color. So if you go into it expecting like these shades to be really, really impactful, like they're not going to be. The the Lava Luster and the Metal Lust Quads formula, like that new special sparkly formula, they will be. They're very, very impactful. But like the cream quads and like even the wet dry formula, which is like this body heat one, for example, they're not as impactful as a normal like Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath Labs metallic. I'm just going to pick up an angle brush from Delium Tools. This is a 7 six five and i'm gonna go into this shade the one thing to keep in mind with all of these quads if there's a dark brown shade like this throw out that thing that i just said this is the exception to the rule these are these dark browns are so pigmented it's crazy right like if you're not wanting a lot of pigment from them just tread carefully because they are like insanely pigmented but they're brilliant because they're really versatile you can make like apply them really really softly or you can apply them like really concentrated and it will be like you know you could apply it as like a smoked out liner or just a liner altogether, or you can really pack it on for like a really deep smoky eye so this shadow in particular is really tailorable from like heavily pigmented to light but i'm just gonna lightly tap in because i don't want too much and then I'm just gonna use like barely bare pressure because you can always add more color on, but to take it off, it's quite hard. And I'm just gonna tap this. See how, like I'm not applying much pressure at all. I didn't pick up much color at all, but see how easily that's applying pigment. And that's kind of all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave that there for now. I can always add more. And I'm just going to take whatever's left over and I'll just pop a little bit on the outer corner of my under eye, but not a lot. I'll just take a little bit of this little rose gold shade here. I don't want to, I just actually don't feel like using this shade too much today because I have other videos I want to film, but I'll just tap a little bit here. And you don't need to, I mean, you can use intensifiers if you want, but because this is a cream formula, honestly, you really don't need to. So I just, I just want to add like a soft wash of color. 
but you can you would be able to build this up a little bit more if you wanted to like I'll just take a little bit on my finger see how that just adds a little bit more but they're not designed to be like wham bam Pat McGrath shirts Pat McGrath Labs shades okay they're just not that's not how they kind of work Ooh, that is pretty that is pretty I'm just gonna flip the brush over and use the other side and now I'm gonna go into this shade this shade is really nice it's quite similar to the one in rose topaz which is this one but it's a little bit more glittery and more intense so we'll try with the brush oh that's so pretty I might just also try it with my finger I feel like it just gives you like that wet look on the lids without like especially for hooded eyes like without any creasing or like gunkiness or anything it's very pretty I'm just gonna put this black Victoria Beckham eyeliner on, on my top like I'm gonna tight line with it I'm actually gonna put my melt cosmetics olive liner in my lower waterline I haven't done this in a little while and I miss it mm. That just adds a little extra something something if you ask me. I'm just gonna go off camera and put some mascara on and do my lips and then we will come back and wrap this up. So two seconds. Okay, so this is the finished look. What do you guys think? I really love it. I find it to be like, even for me, this is like a perfect like Valentine's Day look. Like it's just so soft and like a soft glam and smoky a little bit. I really, I really, really love it personally. Okay, the cream or the Forbidden Pink Quad, sorry. I mean, I love it. I really, really do. This cream formula is for me. It's for me. The packaging, A++++. <laughs> we know I love the packaging, but also, like, to be honest, I just, I knew I was going to love this. It's a color story I, I really love. Like, I like this color story. It's very me, and it's a formula I absolutely adore. It's the same formula as all the other cream quads, and I love it. I love it. Now, I'm never going to tell you to buy a Tom Ford quad, especially. <laughs> that, like, everyone's value of a dollar is different. Only you can decide that for yourself. They are very expensive for, for eyeshadows. I totally respect that. So, and I know a lot of people are just like, you are crazy buying a Tom Ford quad. Totally understand. It's very much like a unique personal, like personal decision. I feel like, especially buying like luxury makeup like this. So you do what you wish. But for me, I just love it. I love it. And I'm so happy to have it. Same with this concealer, like hands down, I'll repurchase this when I go through it. I really, really like it. It's fuss free, easy to use. It covers, it blends out beautifully. It wears beautifully. I feel like Traceless Soft Matte is the most perfect name for this. It really lives up to it and I really, really like it. It's long wearing. I, like I said, apart from the shade range, I don't have a bad thing to say about this product. I really like it. So that is my thoughts. I am, I mean, <laughs> When you spend this much money on makeup, I am extremely happy and excited that they are big wins. What can I say? But you guys let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section as well. I'd love to hear from you guys if you picked up any of these products and what you personally think of them. Let me know. And uh, that's it. So if you're watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't already, pretty please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.